So when I came out of the tunnel, I was in the outer space, and it was like I was seeing pictures from the Hubble spacecraft. If you've seen the galaxies, uh, the Hubble has taken pictures of galaxies and nebula, these incredible shapes in outer space. But I saw this shape here when I came out. It was an hourglass shape. I saw that in the distance, like a, like a photo from the Hubble spacecraft of a nebula. But it was impressed to me that this was the city of God. This was heaven. And I, and I was moving to land right there, okay, on that platform. And it was said to me in the vision that it, it's the Trinity, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but I wasn't sure which was which. Okay, I didn't, didn't get that information. And I landed right here. And then I had a vision of like being at a big gate, a door. Somebody handed me the key to the city. It was about this big. And I'm holding the key to the city of heaven. And this happened in Ephraim Bible Chapel right up at the road here. We were having a soaking night. And, and somebody handed me, whether it was an angel or what, handed me the key to the city of heaven. And I began to weep and wail like I have never wept before. I'm wail, I'm weeping, I mean, tears are coming down my eyes, my nose and my mouth are running and drooling. I'm just wailing at, at the beauty of it, that God would give me, just little old me, the key to the, to the celestial city. And God said to me, you may have the key and you may bring other people in. Thank God. All by revelation. But I had to go down first to within, to the kingdom of heaven that's inside of you. To your spirit man, to your spirit man, to the being inside of you. And then that takes you up to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Now we don't have to get freaked out about that and get into all the other stuff that... Uh, uh, the New Age does because they're just confused. God bless them. They need Jesus. Philippians. I love this verse. This is great. I use this a lot to help people to understand how God works in them. Philippians chapter 2. <coughs> Verse 13, Philippians 2, 13. Well, start in verse 12. It says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. See, now that verse makes sense. You've got to work out your salvation. Why? Because it's the kingdom of heaven that's in you. Mm -hmm. You must take that kingdom of heaven, that wholeness, that salvation, and work it out. Bring the spirit into the concretion of the physical realm. That's beautiful. I just saw that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> ah. For it is God which worketh in you to will and to act in order to fill, fulfill his good purpose. That's an incredible verse. It's God that works in you to will, and the King James says, to do of his good pleasure. So who is working in you? God. Spirit. Right now, God is at work in you. The devil comes along and says, well, that's not really God telling you to do that. Oh, shut up, devil. The Bible says it's God that's working in me. You see? Your parents, your friends, your family, maybe even your pastor, your church will say, well, that can't be God. You tell them, look, I, you know, you have your own opinion, but I believe that God is at work in me to will and to do of his good pleasure. So God is working. He's active. He's busy. Amen. Look at the next verse. Do everything without grumbling or arguing. Now, you've got to interpret that in context of the verse that went before. The everything is doing that which God is already working in you to will and to do in order to fulfill his good pleasure. Amen. So here's a scenario. You get a revelation. God says, John, I want you to open up a ministry center called Ducks. <laughs> I must have some of the river of God in my ear. I'm in my ear. So I say, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And people come up to me and say, John, oh, that can't be God. That's just too unusual. That's just right. So do I begin to argue with God? Say, God, you must be wrong. Get it right and get back with me when you got it right, God. No. 
We don't, we don't grumble or argue with God. We believe that He works in us to will and to do. Whether anybody believes it, whether anybody accepts it, when you've heard God, you've heard God, you move and do what He tells you to do. All right? Now, I'm not talking about bucking authority and going against your pastor. But if, if your authority is walking by the Spirit, guess what? They're going to get the same revelation because God's not schizophrenic. Glory to God. All right. Now, uh, we're going to look at uh, Exodus. You guys are doing good. We're going to do a few more verses, take a break, and then we're going to actually hear God's voice. Okay? Amen. Yeah. Exodus chapter 35. You got it. 21. It says, And everyone who was willing and whose heart moved them came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for all its service and for the sacred garments. It says, Everyone whose heart was moved, God moved their heart. Mm -hmm. It is the responsibility and the work of God to move men's hearts. It's God that works in you to will and to do of His good pleasure. And finally, we're going to close with this verse, one of the great ones in the New Testament. Colossians. Colossians 1.27. How would you like to be a superman or a superwoman? How would you like to be able to leap tall buildings in a single bound? To boldly go where no man could go before. How would you like to move in the supernatural realm in a supernatural way? So that when people think about your life, they say, I don't know about that person, but there is miracles that follows that guy. He moves in a way where supernatural things happen. How would you like to be a superman and a superwoman? Very simple. Get connected. To the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Superman. He's above all principality and power and might. He owns all things. He rules all things. He has dominion over all things under God. So if you connect with this Lord Jesus Christ, you become a super, supernatural being in the natural realm. You'll live a quality of life that far exceeds normal people.